Chris Vinton, and I'm a writer for JBoss Fuse Middleware at Red Hat, and I'd like to talk about the point where community documentation meets product documentation. And I really like community documentation because it provides a huge, fantastic resource for creating my product docs. But rather than just treating it as a source of information, uh, I'd like to ask the question whether it's possible to use the documentation directly, the community documentation. So, in other words, could the community write my docs? That's the question I'd like to explore, and I'd like to share some of my experiences with it. The first question I'd like to ask myself is, is this really a good idea? Am I just going to make myself redundant? This is a bit worrying as a writer. Well, as a matter of fact, it is actually a good idea. The reality is that as writers, we, don't, we never have enough time to pursue all the projects we'd like to pursue, and we e hardly have enough time even to write the core documentation that ideally we'd like to get written. So if the community can take some of this load off our shoulders, then it's a very good thing, and uh, to be welcomed. So to give you some idea of how much the community can contribute, uh, the library that I'm working on has about 6,000 pages of documentation in total. <laughs> and of that, about 1,000 pages has been taken straight from the community. So there's a big payoff for us in uh, using that community documentation. So our products are based on a number of Apache projects. So Apache ActiveWebQ, Apache Camel, Apache CXF, and a few others. And the documentation of Apache is mostly hosted on Confluence Wiki instance. So our community documentation is based on a, how do we get the uh, laser working? No, no idea how it works. <laughs> the red button. Oh yeah, brilliant. Okay, so the community documentation we're looking at is hosted on Confluence. So it's in Confluence wiki format, which is basically a dialect of textile. However, our product documentation is all written in Docbook. Red Hat mandates that we write all our product docs in Docbook, so it's got to be Docbook. So the first thing I want to do is to contrast wiki format with Docbook format, because there's quite a lot of difference between them, and they both have their strengths and weaknesses. What's really good about wikis is that it's a fantastic way of uh, harvesting information and uh, getting expert, uh, experts to contribute what they know. Um, the Barriot's contribution is low. Typically, you just click an edit button and away you go. There's, there's also the, the joy of instant feedback. Okay, it's not necessarily instant, it's usually moderated, but still, usually very quickly after making a contribution, you can see it up there. You, you've actually added something to the documentation. And there's almost a zero learning curve. Markdown, textile, wiki markup is generally pretty easy to learn. Just about a minute looking at uh, some examples and you can figure it out. And it's also editable as plain text. And as we saw yesterday in uh, readme-driven documentation, developers love the fact that uh, documentation is plain text. They can put it in with their, with their source code. It fits in very nicely into their processes. So all of these points really encourage people to contribute, and you're really much more likely to get people weighing in with the documentation if you uh, present them as a wiki. Docbook, on the other hand, has other strengths. It's got a much bigger learning curve. Um, that's not really a problem for a full-time writer, because if we didn't have any skills, why would anybody bother uh, hiring us in the first place? So we don't mind the fact that it takes a while to learn Docbook. And it has some advantages. It has a very rich markup vocabulary. Um, Dotbook has about 500 tags. That's probably too many, in fact. But it does mean that for whatever kind of markup you want to do, sort of semantically, in terms of layout, you'll find a tag that will do the job for you. And Ditto, similarly, is also a very rich uh, markup language. And the syntax is very precise. These are XML-based formats, so there is um, there's an XML schema that defines them very precisely. You've got XML parsers everything around XML to support them. Uh, this contrasts somewhat with wiki uh, markup. You can sometimes push uh, markdown and markup to the limits. If you want to put a bullet list inside a table, inside another bullet list, inside a numbered list, at some point, the markdown kind of just sit, the parsers just kind of give up. You just kind of, you get the random results. Whereas in Docbook, you can do that kind of crazy stuff 
and it's all because the syntax is very precise, it'll all work. And you've got sophisticated build options. You can use conditions and profiling so that you can build different versions of the documentation for it embedding in different products and, uh, and so on. And you can also structure your documentation flexibly using includes in the case of docbook and using comrefs in the case of Dida. And this also helps you to reuse uh, material as well in different places. And support for entities, it's like variables, so you can uh, and it's also a good archive format. It's a very stable format, and uh, it's, it's standardized. The standards have been stable for years, almost decades, I could practically say. So you can store this in a database somewhere <coughs> for a long time, be confident that in the future, you'll be able to take it out and use it and build documentation with it in the future. So we have our community docs in uh, wiki format, and the product docs in Docker format, we have to perform some kind of conversion. So the first thing you have to do is look for some conversion tools. And for this particular scenario, going from Confluence Wiki to Docbook, there's a commercial tool available that does exactly this scenario called Scroll Docbook Exporter. So that's a good tool to use for this particular case. More generally, there is Pandoc, we've already uh, come across several times at the conference. Uh, which is a fantastic tool because it can take almost any format and convert it to almost any other format. And what I actually used though was a homegrown tool called ConfDoc because at the time I started there was nothing else really available. But what its, it's functionality is pretty much the same as Scroll Docker Wiki. It's, uh, it's a Confluence plugin which just converts the Confluence Wiki to Docker. Okay, so conversion tool, we have the conversion tool, looks like we're done. And at the planning phase, it could look as if you know it's all about doing the conversion and installing it, customizing it, and that's really what the whole problem is all about. But unfortunately, this is only half the story. You're not really finished at this point. There's another problem, which is the impotence mismatch between community documentation and your corporate product documentation, because they're not exactly the same animal, and you don't, uh, you're not going to be using exactly the same uh, material. In community documentation, the, the, you can have variable quality in terms of formatting and style. Uh, some contributors might pay a lot of attention to the fonts they use, the layout, and other contributors just they just slap down text and uh, just get information there, and it doesn't really, they don't pay too much attention to how they format it. And whatever they do, they're probably not going to be conforming to your corporate style guidelines. So, you could, so. the other thing is uh, versioning. The uh, community documentation is typically just one version of it, just it is a one wiki which covers all versions of the product. Whereas in corporate documentation, you release the whole product set for every product release, so you've got several complete sets of documentation for each version. So it's not as if versioning is ignored in community documentation, it's just that it's handled in quite a different way. Um, you can also have inappropriate content in community docs, for example, just simply, it might be simply stuff you don't want to support. In community documentation, you might document a feature, which is kind of new, a little bit untested, not very mature. But when you go to importing that to your product documentation, you might decide, well, we might wait a few releases before we start to support that. It could be some inaccurate claims. If you say something works in the community docs, nobody's going to get really angry at you because you know it's open source documentation. It's open source products. People get the product for free. But if that happens in a product documentation for a corporation that's selling a product, People are going to get angry, and they're going to demand you fix the product so it actually does what it says in the documentation. So you have to be careful about the accuracy. And you might even have links to competitor products or discussions of competitor products, which you probably don't want to put into your corporate documentation. So because of that, you've got to go through another stage before you're finished using community docs. So the approach we took was uh, we, put, uh, we have a repository for the community docs and a separate repository for the finished product documentation. And so this could be some kind of vision control system like Git or Subversion. So we have this, a series of uh, snapshots of the community documentation in Docker format. And for the product documentation for each release, we've got some snapshots of the product documentation in the version control system. So when you're going to do a new product release, you would 
convert, take a snapshot of the community documentation, convert it into Docker format, and store it in your version control system. And then, using standard merge procedure in version control system, you can merge that in to your product. And this little delta here indicates how much work you have to do, because you're going to have to do some manual work to actually get that merged in. <coughs> so that sounds promising. Unfortunately, it turns out that this process doesn't really work. Because what happens in reality is <laughs> the community documentation and the product documentation, they diverge. And in fact, they diverge rather quickly. In a couple after a couple of releases, you'll find this process just becomes unmanageable. That work, oops. Okay. The work you have to do uh, just gets larger and larger very rapidly. But you can tweak this process a little bit to make it a bit more manageable. So <coughs> what I found was that if you simply compare the current version of the community docs with the previous version, and you can do this using automated diff tool, then you'll find that that difference is much smaller. So you can simply do a diff those two between the last release and, and this release. And any stuff that's been added in, you can just copy and paste that across. And because this is already a doc format, you could just paste it straight into your product docs. And if stuff that needs to be removed, you can just remove it from your product docs. So this process works. It takes, it obviously involves a bit of manual labor, but it's doable. Uh, so for example, for the thousand pages of documentation that I take from the Apache Camel uh, website, it takes me about three or four days of work to bring that all in, uh, to paste it across the product documentation, which for a thousand pages, updating a thousand pages of documentation is, is pretty good going, and it's a pretty good payoff. So, so I want to ask that uh, how far you can push this because okay, this is the, the, the process is, is is doable and it's usable, but um, still involves a bit of manual labor. So, how could you reduce this? Could you actually single source it? Just have your uh, community docs be the same as your product docs? Well, the obvious way to do this is just to go in and edit the community documentation directly and put all the information you want to your product docs put it straight into the community. So this is, up to a point, this is a good thing, because the community benefits from the extra documentation, whatever corrections you make, and our product documentation benefits because we have all of the, all of the uh, things we want are in their upstream. But you can't, uh, you can't push this too far because our requirements for products are not necessarily the same as the community. You've got to, you've got to share this documentation with a lot of people and there is potential for conflict. For example, uh, clobbering other people's work is not going to make you popular. If somebody's written a lovely tutorial with, you know, in a very informal style, conversational style, with a lot of personality, maybe quotes from blogs from their friends and stuff like that, and you're going to say, no, I want to write this in a nice grey corporate style, and you eliminate all the personality, eliminate all the, you know, quotations from blogs, the person who contributed that tutorial, they might just be a little bit unhappy. So. You can't overdo it. And uh, yeah, so personality is good to the community, not necessarily for products. And the more obvious thing is that your com our competitors are actually using the same, are actually involved in the same community. So if you make it too focused on your, your own product docs, you might end up in a ridiculous situation where you go in and change to be one way, and your competitor comes in and changes it back to you the way they want. <laughs> you have a ridiculous kind of uh, wars going on between you and your competitors. So. <coughs> you need a little bit of distance between the community docs and the product docs. <coughs> so just as a thought experiment, <coughs> I asked myself, well, how could you circumvent this? What kind of hypothetical tool could solve this problem? Would it be possible to have a, some kind of dual purpose with you that lets you combine the needs of community with the needs of your product documentation? So just a couple of things off the top of my head is, it would be nice if uh, the wiki was topic oriented, so you've got some nice chunking of documentation. And it would be nice if you could handle versioning in a more flexible way. So for example, if you could tag a topic as belonging to a particular version or a range of versions, so that you can easily separate out material that's specific to versions. And condition, uh, conditionals and profiling, it would be good if you could have, if you could add material to the wiki, but which is only visible in your product documentation, so you could just have it all in place. And conversely, 
you could also just have set this tag, you only want it to appear in the wiki, but not in the public documentation. And it's probably occurred to some of you that this is, is, uh, is rather like what Christine was uh, describing in that classic conference. <laughs> that, uh, some of this stuff is, seems to be actually is, is it starting to come into the, uh, the wiki. So it'd be interesting to see how this develops, if this catches on, it really becomes feasible for, you know, to have a mixture of uh, community and product documentation in one place. So the conclusion, um, this is really the whole issue of, of bringing in community documentation and integrating it into products is, is a huge area. Um, the Red Hat being a big company um, consumes a lot of community documentation. There's probably dozens of community projects uh, written in dozens of formats, Markdown, ASCII doc, even docbook, markup. And uh, it's, uh, it's potentially large. We haven't really got a head, head around how to do this. Probably, we should probably look into Pandoc, actually, because it probably could uh, make a big contribution to dealing with this. And the other thing is that the conversion, just mere conversion formats is not the only problem. We've also got to, to manage uh, the diversity of content between the community and products. But I don't want to make it sound negative, although there are, there's a certain amount of work involved and there are difficulties, there's also a huge payoff uh, for you know, product. One word, licensing. <laughs> <coughs> licensing. Um, <laughs> well, I, yeah, that, that last, that's going to be several questions. I interpret lots of ways. Well, and I think it should be fairly uncomplicated. Um, our product, uh, Red Hat product documentation, is 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 open source license. You can you can steal it. Our competitors can steal it if they want. Uh, so if you've got an open, you know, a kind of a GNU license for the uh, committee docs, uh, our, our product docs, it's not a problem. Yeah. If we put up the product docs on the wiki, if it's open, everybody, it's not a problem for us. What about the licensing of the things that you're making? How does that work? Well, I, that should be okay because, um, I mean, most of these, these Apache, the Apache license is, is uh, compatible with uh, our licenses. We can, we can use that. We, we make it freely available as well when we recycle it. So, it's a problem. Are you using uh, like GPL for, for, or like the GNU free documentation license, or is it MIT? Oh, I, 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 I have to check up on that. I'm not quite sure. Camel, Apache Camel is going to be Apache license. Okay. Yeah, count is a patch of us. It's, it's, it's compatible. Right? The, does it actually mean that currently you only take community documentation and uh, there is no feedback or edits that go back to, to the community? I mean, for example, if you find a configuration error in a config example, does it, and you fix it in the product docs, uh, do you catch it back? To the Not all the time. Uh, there are there are people. Our, we we kind of there are other, various people in our team who contribute to the wikis, and we should probably do more of that. In fact, we've been a little bit scratched uh, recently, um, but uh, I think uh, we should, yeah we, we could do more of, of contributing back to the community. It would be good for us. Say it's less. It's, it's easier for us to manage the documentation if if we contribute to the wiki as well. Maybe time for one more question, if anyone has one. Yeah. All right, well, thank you.